It wasn't the first desert I'd been in. I'd been in Star Wars since day one out in Tunisia in 1976. Sand dunes and all that. This was the desert in Jordan that Ralph McQuarrie must have had in mind when he, he'd painted that original picture of 3PO. These strange, craggy shapes with a kind of miasma of sand below them, so the whole thing kind of melted into one. It, it was, it was heart-turning. In a way, it was like 3PO coming, coming home. Okay. Am I in there? Yeah. No one understands 3PO at this point better than Anthony. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I visited Anthony at home and he showed me some of the dialogue looping notes from Star Wars, the, the first Star Wars, and from The Empire Strikes Back. So there are handwritten sheets that say, I'm not going that way, it's much too rocky. Or the moment in Empire Strikes Back where he says the chances of successfully navigating an asteroid field are 3,720 to 1. But in the original, it had said the chances of successfully navigating an asteroid field are 3,725 to 1. And he changed it and got rid of the 5 because the rhythm was better yeah. the, w the way that it ended up in the film. You know, on the other shot, uh, when I says to R2, you know, come on, let's go, yeah. I've already seen them, so they ought to be kind of in the doorway. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to cut it, but... That whole end of it is a little tricky. You just throw it all away. You cut me out of this, make it easy. He has a way of tilting his head or raising it back that's... You, it just... It says more probably than a person would do. The face itself has no expression, but I find working with Tony Daniels, who plays the part, you read expressions into that face. To me, he has an incredibly mobile face. He looks quizzical. He's, uh, you know, when he's in danger. I can't stop myself making all the faces and smiling or frowning, looking worried. Even though I'm way behind something, nobody can see what I'm doing. But for myself, I'm doing all the actions. And people come up and they take the face and they say, oh, I'll try this on. And they put it on and how oh, they take it off again because they can't bear it, you know. I don't know. There's something wrong with me that I can put up with it. What do you think? Would you put your head in there? Uh, Neither would I. I rather love 3 PO. I think he's, uh, he's a nice guy. I think he gets <laughs> a rough time, but, but that's part of the, the magic of it. And I remember at our cast dinner where everyone had started reading the script and Anthony hadn't read it yet. So he kept hearing from everybody, oh my God, 3 PO's role in this film. Suddenly 3 PO was part of the team again. Not since really the, the very first film. Had 3PO lived such a full life? It's been gratifying to give Anthony a role that was bigger and to really let him go along on the adventure, because he has been along on the adventure since the beginning. I made it. That's one of my favorite little plot twists, 3PO losing his memory. Rich with comic potential, because you know he's sort of written to get on people's nerves. <laughs> But he always has really funny lines. I've forgotten how much I abhor space travel. You know, I always picture three people be much happier, you know, at the opera serving hors d'oeuvres instead of rattling through space. Three PO is, uh, I think, very like an English butler. He's that particularly British sort of person, very archaic and rather uh, out of his time. And action! And consequently, he finds all the things that happen in Star Wars, you know, the battles, the explosions, all the nasty characters like Darth Vader. He finds that very worrying. Tony! Look! Oh, 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 is in some ways the observer of all things and the memory of the saga. So when we were playing with different plots for 3PO, it, it felt like it was in his DNA that one of the plots was he should lose his memory because he's always the one who's observing and commenting on, on everything. And, if 3PO loses his memory, it's as though the crawl would disappear because 3PO is the, is the keeper of the, of the story. You're going to have the back of your head off now, and the wires will be coming from that. If we make him translate it, he won't remember anything. Always remember go blank. Blank, blank. <laughs> if this mission fails, then it's all been for nothing. All we have done, all this time. Often Star Wars characters sacrifice themselves. I mean, think of 
Obi-Wan Kenobi. He went to battle the dark side, Darth Vader, and sacrificed himself for everybody. And now 3 is doing the same thing. And you know, he's, he's not too ready to do it because he's gonna be destroyed as himself. There'll be a spark, which you probably hear. Yep. As soon as you hear the you can just, yeah. Action, working, working, working. Three, two, one, spark! The fact that 3PO is willing to sacrifice himself is because he belongs to the, the team. He loves the team, the humans. With 3PO, I really, I think he's one of the more human characters in the, in the, in the film. Might I introduce myself? I am C-3PO, human cyborg relations. And you are? Okay, that's gonna be a problem. Hello, I'm Bubble Freak. And then, even from right here, you're gonna be like, that's, that's gonna be a problem. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> classic. You got, you got classic to... pose. And so, then, uh, we might actually go from Zori's line to the close of, of Babu saying, oh, I guess it's cool. And, action. Go, 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 go! Oh my god, oh my god, it's ridiculous. Can you imagine if we did that? <laughs> the scene I did literally with the 20 seconds. <laughs> oh my god, it's terrible. All right, we're good. Thank you.